Tom Gill has created a new style of painting with acrylics. Come watch the magic. So I'm going to do something very different tonight. Unusual. You, you've probably never seen this kind of painting. You haven't seen what I'm going to do because this is something I invented. It's very unusual, and I hope it works. <laughs> I think it will work. I, I'm, always, I'm always trying different things and new styles, and I, I started painting with these things. And I'm not doing that tonight, though. I'm doing something else. But I don't know if you've seen these. Liquitex makes acrylic paint markers. And Michael's has some, but they don't have a full set. So I bought them out of Nick Blick in Boston. And I bought all the whole set of like 40 of these colors. So instead of mixing on a palette, I was kind of like coloring, or like pastels. And I did some great paintings with them. But then they all dried up. and. And I ran out of money, so I just <laughs> bought a whole new set. And I have um, on my business card, I, I bought some business cards. I did a, you probably can't see it, but I did this portrait of my granddaughter with these paint markers. And I had so much fun doing them. But in the end, they, they didn't finish off nice, but they were a lot of fun to use them. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to be doing some more. You can do a painting using three colors, like, like red, yellow, blue, limited palette. A lot of artists use just limited palette. But, um, so what I, what I started doing was, this is how I, I'm going to do the painting. I do the whole thing in black, and then I clean it up with white. It's like an underpainting. Then I go over the whole painting with red and yellow and do that. And then I go over with the blue, the cool colors. Then I go back with the white and I clean up that and then the black again, then the colors. Sounds crazy, but you can see this. It's, it's, uh, it works. It's kind of like, you know, like offset printing. When they do the printing process, they do they print one color at a time. So like when I'm putting a color down, it's a, so I put the glaze, color over color glazes and that mixes. So I'm actually not mixing much on the palette. I bought a mini palette because my other one, my big one was cracked and it was full of paint and I didn't want to clean it. So I said, <laughs> I was just lazy. I said, I'm just going to use this painting, this thing tonight because I'm only doing one color at a time. But this is how I do it. But, you know, I'm going to veer off in the end and I'm going to start mixing some colors because uh, time is limited. And so, but in basic theory, that's how I do it. I do it all black, then white, then red, yellow. Then the cool colors, then back with white, and then black, and then the colors again. So my father said, that sounds like it takes a long time doing it that way. I said, no, it's faster. I'm not mixing on the palette. I'm not mixing any colors. I'm just, I'm just putting them on like that. And the painting I'm going to do is, um, well, this picture, I can pick something I did before because I don't want to do something I have to have it come out right. So I lived in this house 20 years. I rented the apartment upstairs, Mrs. Hewitt's house on Middlesex Street, Lowell. So I was, um, I did several versions of this house, and um, and sometimes I'd see it when the light was just nice, and I'd say, "Oh, it looks great." So I, like, I'd be shoveling the driveway, and I'd say, "Oh, look at it! Look at the light now! I gotta get your camera." And I did pictures in the snow. With the lights, with the lights on in the windows, and, and I, I did, like I said, several versions. So I used these brushes. This was kind of a standard set for me. I used a pointy, pointy brush. And now I, I just started using a big brush, and I like it. And uh, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> I did over like 40 paintings for the Enterprise Bank, counting sketches and everything. I did all 23 Enterprise Banks, big ones. If you see Enterprise Bank going there behind the towers, is my my paintings there. So he likes my work. So. That's a... Do you sign your paintings? Yeah, I sign on the front and on the back. Oh, because in some of the Enterprises, I've actually looked for. Uh... Signatures and could never find them. Well, I keep it kind of subtle. Ah. <laughs> I say if they really want to know, they can look for it. <laughs> and I keep looking at the one in North Bell Rica, the one of the, uh, uh, I guess it would be the falls in front of the auditorium. Or yeah. in front of the old uh, post office, rather. Yeah, the North Bell Rica, yeah. 
That's the one that that's the only one I didn't do behind the tellers. And right, that's on the side. Yeah. Let me try this <coughs> How did you learn this technique to Oh, by experience. <laughs> Trial and error. <laughs> I, I don't know, I just just by experience. Oh, so acrylic, huh? Yeah. Acrylic. So using a big mighty the mighty big Yeah, it one. makes it all black for us to need. It's going to come out. Keep the faith. Okay. <laughs> I, I can see it. <laughs> People will look at me painting outside. They say, oh, that's really nice. What is it? <laughs> soft. I start out with soft edges, and then I define it as I go. So. It's like underpainting. It's a bad, it's a monochromatic underpainting. And I, I turn it upside down a lot. So it'll be a way to Because when you're looking at a photo, you when you're looking at a photo, you look at different, different spatial relationships and and so I like to look at my paintings a lot upside down and I and I do a lot with it upside down. Because you see it differently. And that helps me a lot. Well another another way you can use a mirror. And that works too. Oh, it's upside down. Well, I say you, you can't really do it from life, but you know when I was painting them all in off <laughs> I did turn the painting upside down and I did see it differently and I said, Oh I need more dark up here and I so when I even though I was painting it from life, I turned it upside down and looked at it. And I said, Oh I just need this it's funny, it's funny that it actually works. So now I'm checking my drawing and my shapes and things. That goes there. That goes there. Is this a real place, Tom? Yes, I looked at 20 years. Oh, it's a place. It's on Middlesex Street. Let me try this.
Yeah, yeah, may have fight field the low with the hundred I call it Mrs. Heaven's house. Is it still there? It's still there. Apartment. <laughs> I always say, oh, I gotta clean this place, it's a mess. I walk back and forth, back and forth, I say, how the hell are they just paint? <laughs> 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 Is your apartment also your studio, or do you have a separate studio? No, it's my studio. I had it. I was at the Western Avenue for a while, but I left there. I like working at home better. I wake up and I'm there. Yep. <laughs> okay, keep going. It's wet. I don't really paint wet on wet. I paint dry on dry. I'm going to dry it like this. I hope I don't get any paint on your home. You go with your right angle. Need a hair dryer. I need a hair dryer. That's a good thing to have. Now I'm going to try to define my drawing a little better. So I'm going to switch to this this brown pointy brush. And so I got a lot of soft edges. And now I got to get some definition. So I kind of have a general idea where I want things. I know what I forgot my triangle because I use a triangle for straight edges. But I can use I can use this thing. Do you always tend to work from reference pictures? Yeah. Unless I'm working from life, I, I paint from my own photos. I got hundreds of photos. I got a lot of things I want to paint. You still on black? Yeah, I'm going to switch off now. Oh, yeah. I'm going to switch to white. Now I'm going to go over with some white. I use gesso for the white, the liquid stuff. Because that because it uh, flows more freely and it's not so pa not pasty like the tubes of white. But usually I do a little more than this, but I'm but I'm uh, short on time, so I'm I'm skipping to this. Yeah. Wait, what is it? That's two. Finding your lines more so, right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put some colors in. Okay, I'm gonna use red, cafe red, medium, pure, and red and yellow. Red and yellow? Red and yellow. Oh, he's gonna do the one house together. You know, I think is that a haunted house to be? Yeah, I think it is. The colors are there. <laughs> You are the haunted Okay, I like to do this next step with it upside down. <laughs> uh, I like it to be dry so it don't all smudge together. 
So, sometimes this is good. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 That doesn't work when, with oil paint. Yeah. <laughs> Is that my problem? <laughs> Wait, you know, you can make a you can make a painting black and white. Just leave it black and white. So usually when I do the black, it's more refined and more finished, and then. And then the white is more clean, uh, more finished. This is this is like a sketch. What I'm doing, it's like a, a yeah. sketch because I don't have a lot of time. But I'm showing you the step by step that I do. So this part I like to do it upside down. The red and the yellow. And you can see I, my palette. I look, I don't have my razor blade, so it might be a little dirty. And I'm going to use a big brush. So wherever it's yellow, I add more yellow. Wherever it's warmer, I add more red. That's the theory. Oh, for say that again. When it, if there's, say someone had a red shirt, I'd paint it more red. Or uh, if it was really red, I'd add more red. But if it was leaned more towards a yellow color, someone had a yellow shirt or yellow, I, I lean more to a yellow. But I do the red and yellow together. What color is the house in the picture? Sun. This late in the afternoon scene. It's going to be blue, I think. And then there's a red chimney. So this is a red chimney, so I need more to it. Oops, not too much. It's red. Too bad. <laughs> So if you take your painting and, it, and it's kind of flat and not exciting, well, you take your painting and then just paint all the white areas with white gesso and pop the whites out of the picture. So you take a flat belt painting, paint in all the white in light areas with white, and then repaint those areas and pop it out so nice. So then I go like this. That dries. And then I... Then I wipe over it. It's so wet. Oh, yeah. Well, I got them both down. I got Sumerian blue and Prussian blue. Prussian Now I gotta now I'm gonna mix all the colors up.
I have, I have a certain style with a lot of strokes, and that's my style. I like to bring this form with strokes like a pastel art. And uh, all the paintings I do for the bank, and they look at it and say, Mr. Duncan says, well, you, you got too many strokes in there. And I said, where's the strokes? He says, everywhere. I says, I don't know, that's the way I paint. Thank you so much, Tom Gill, for such a magical demonstration.